In this video, I'm gonna teach you how to edit a video from start to finish in an amazing program that's absolutely free. Yes, it's completely free. And I'm gonna do it in 10 minutes. I'm gonna teach you everything you need to know from getting your footage into the program, slicing it up, adding text, music, and color grading, all the way to exporting a finished awesome video ready to share. There's no fluff, no filler. I'm just gonna give you the basics that you need to get up and running fast. First things first, let's go download DaVinci Resolve from the Blackmagic website. I'm gonna drop a link in the description below. And you'll notice there's two versions. You're gonna want the free one. Honestly, everyone's gonna tell you that the free one has like 90% of the features that you're gonna need. Especially starting out, you're not gonna miss anything. So once you install it, let's go open the program. You're gonna see this launch screen. Go ahead and click new project, give it a name. I suggest naming it whatever you're editing. I'm gonna go ahead and call mine learn to edit and then just hit create. And there you go, you're in. We've got our first project ready to go. Now DaVinci Resolve can do a lot if you wanna get fancy. You can edit a whole movie or professional project on the free one, no problem. So the first thing you wanna look at is down here at the bottom. These are different workspaces, all designed to do something different. Each one is super powerful. There's the media page for importing your shots. This is a great way to catalog, tag, and organize everything in your project. The cut page is for doing basic edits. The edit page is for doing more complex edits. And this is where we're gonna spend most of our time. The Fusion page is for animating, visual effects, and compositing. It's like Adobe After Effects, and it's pretty awesome. The Color page is for grading and making your footage look like it was filmed for a major Hollywood movie. Now, this is probably the most powerful feature in DaVinci Resolve, and it's why it's used in major Hollywood studios. The Fairlight page is for audio editing. It's got pro features like built-in ADR tools, real-time EQ, dynamics processing, immersive 3D audio mixing like Dolby Atmos, it's got full multi-track recording with precision automation. Basically, it's a broadcast level sound control. And finally, the deliver page is for exporting your video when it's all done. It's got awesome presets for YouTube, the web, and so much more. Before we do anything though, let's head down to the bottom right and we're gonna click that gear icon to open up the project settings. Here we're gonna set our project resolution and frame rate. Personally, I like shooting at 4K and 24 frames per second. I would set my project to that, however, a lot of you are probably gonna be using HD, in which case you'd probably choose 1920 by 1080 with whatever frame rate you personally prefer. If you're not sure, don't worry about it. I'd recommend just putting it on 30 frames per second if you don't know. And to keep it simple, we're not gonna to touch on anything else except for proxy media format. Just make sure it's not set as ProRes 422. That format is totally overkill for basic video previews. So I'm gonna go with H.264 instead. Now click save to save your preferences. So today we're working on a simple video and we wanna keep your workflow super short. So we are going to head straight to the edit page. We can import all of our media directly into here. All right, it's time to bring in your video clips. Just head over to the media pool on the left. If you don't see it, click the icon here and it'll pop right up. All you gotta do is just open a folder and drag and drop your file straight into the project. It's that easy. You can drag them one at a time or you can select as many as you want and you can drag them all at once. When you do, you might get a pop-up asking if you wanna match the project's frame rate to your footage. Now this is what we set up in the settings a minute ago. If the footage you're bringing into the timeline is different than what you set over there, it's just letting you know that you can change it now. So most of the time, you're just gonna go ahead and click change. You just want everything synced up. And don't worry, we can always change it later if you need to. Also, you can always drag in more videos, photos, music, or audio anytime you want. So let's get into it. We're gonna drag our first clip from the media pool straight into the timeline, anywhere. It doesn't have to go right at the start. You can literally drag it in anywhere and let go. Notice how the video tracks show up in blue. Audio tracks are green. Uh, if you wanna make them bigger, it's super easy to fix and expand the video and audio tracks just like this. You're gonna see the waveforms right there. It's super helpful to see these when you're editing so you can see when the audio is stopped, which is usually where you wanna make an edit. To play your video, just hit the space bar, hit the space bar again to stop, or you can click up here in the timeline ruler and drag the playhead at your own speed, forwards or backwards. You can zoom in and out by pressing Command and plus or Command and minus, depending on how close you wanna work. And at the top, you can see these preview options so you can see what kind of viewer you want. You can choose a single view 
or a dual view. Dual view is great because it shows a preview of any clips that you double click in the media pool. And you can also still see the timeline at the same time, which is great. You can click on different clips and you can scrub through them to see which one you might want to bring in next without leaving the timeline view at all. You can even drag that clip into the timeline from the preview window if you want. This is completely up to you and how you want to edit. I would suggest putting it on single view if you're just starting out. So if you want to resize things and move your screen around, you can drag the bars above and below the timeline to adjust the size of your tracks, or you can move the viewer and the media panes around to fit however you want to work. Now, if you're editing something like a dialogue heavy scene, turn on this linked selection here. Just make sure the audio and video stick together when you move them around or make cuts. This is super handy. If you try to move a video of a person talking without linking the clips, you might accidentally get them out of sync. Resolve is great though, because it shows you a warning to let you know that. All right, so let's make some cuts. Grab the blade tool or press B and click where you wanna cut. If you made sure to turn on link selection, it'll split both the audio and video at once. Go ahead and hit delete to remove that section. Just don't forget to switch back to the arrow tool after so you can rearrange and you can move all of your edited clips. If you don't move back to the arrow tool, you'll probably accidentally slice things up while you're navigating. If that happens, just press Command Z to undo. Now, here's a quick tip. If you just want to trim the start or the end of a clip, you can use the arrow tool and hover over the edge just like this. Drag it in or out. You'll see that white line. It shows you how much of the original clip is still available. If you've got a second clip on the timeline and you want to adjust where one ends and the next one begins, just go ahead and hover between them. You'll notice there's two arrows going left and right. Just go ahead and drag. You can also move these clips around freely, left, right. You can go up to another video track. This is perfect if you're adding B-roll over a talking head and you don't want to delete what's underneath. It's always good to keep your base layer in case you need it later. Now let's say you've got a B-roll clip like this where the video is fine, but the audio is just noise or someone else is talking that you don't want. It's a super easy fix. Just turn off the link selection and then just click the audio all by itself. And then you click delete and you're done. Clean timeline, no extra sound we don't want. Now, let's spice things up with some music. This works exactly the same as adding video clips. I've got a music file here from artlist.io and I'm gonna drag it straight into the media pool. You can double click it to preview it and you can listen back if you want. And also, you can just drag it directly into the timeline from the preview window. I'm gonna go ahead and drop the track right at the beginning of the edit. So it starts with the first camera shot. Let's press play and too loud. So just like our talking head track, you can expand the audio track to see the waveforms more clearly. You'll notice a faint white horizontal line across the clips. That's your volume level. Just go ahead and drag that up to make it louder, or you can drag it down to make it quieter. For music under dialogue, I recommend keeping it around minus 20 to 25 dB so it sits nicely in the background without being too overpowering. Now, if you wanna fade your music in or out, just look for the small white fade handle at the start or the end of the track. Just drag it across and it'll create a nice smooth fade in or a fade out if it's at the end. So that's how you adjust the overall volume, but sometimes you might wanna make specific parts of your audio loud or quieter. So hover over that white line right where you wanna start changing the audio levels and press Option and then click to create a keyframe. Also add another one about one second before that. Now go to the part where you want it to go back to where it was and do the same thing. Now hover over that white line in the middle, drag it up or down to change the volume right where you want. All right, let's talk about adding text and titles to your video. It's super easy. And if you want animations, they are already done for you. Over on the left-hand side, you will see the effects tab. If you don't see it, click up here and you'll see a section on the left called titles. Now you got a few options here. If you hover over and scrub left and right with your mouse, you'll actually see a little preview of the animation, which is super helpful before you commit to anything. Once you find the text style that you like, just drag it straight onto your timeline and make sure you place it above your video clip. I always like to zoom in a bit here so I can really see what's going on. And when you play it back, your text animation shows right over your footage. Now to customize it, just go ahead and click on the text layer to select it. Look over on the top right, you'll see the properties panel. If you don't see the properties panel, just click right here and you can type in your own text. And of course you can change the font, the color, 
the size, everything you'd expect. There's a few more adjustments you can make, but that's the basics of it. Next up, transitions. You don't have to use transitions if you prefer to make really hard cuts, but if you do want to add a bit of movement between clips, again, we're going to go to the effects tab, but this time scroll down and select video transitions. You're going to see a ton of awesome ones in here. And again, same as with the titles, you can hover over it and you can slide to the left and right to preview what it will look like on your clip. To add one, super simple. Just drag and drop it onto the start or the end of your clip. It'll apply automatically. If you got two clips side by side and you wanna place it right in the middle of them, you can just drag your transition and drop it right between them and it'll do its thing. Now the next tab is the fusion tab and I'm not even gonna open that can of worms in this video. It's for more advanced VFX and honestly, if you're just getting started, I'd recommend you just skip it for now. We'll stick with the built-in effects on the edit page. They'll do more than enough to make your videos look pro. All right, color correction time. This is where DaVinci Resolve really shines and this is why I switched over to the program. That's what it's famous for. And yes, there are a million options, but I'm gonna show you a super simple, no fuss way to get your footage looking clean without diving too deep. Go ahead and select the clip that you want to color correct. If you don't see Eclipse, just click up here. Then you want to come down to the color wheels. Now, the first thing I usually tackle is the color temperature, especially if your footage looks a bit too blue or orange, just slide it until it feels right. Next, we'll go to contrast. This particular clip is looking a bit flat, so I'm going to add a little contrast. I'm going to dial that in a bit, and then I'm going to bring up the shadows just to brighten things up. After that, I'm gonna pull the highlights down a bit. Over here, you're gonna see the color boost. This is a great way to punch up your colors and make everything pop without looking too crazy. There you go. Check out a before and after. That's a massive difference for less than a minute of work. If you've got multiple clips from the same setup and you wanna color correct them all at once, just hold down Command, Control on Windows, select them all, press your middle mouse button, and you can apply the adjustments. Keep in mind, this only works if the clips are from the same scene or lighting setup. If they're different shots, just do that one individually. And then if you have more from that scene, you can go ahead and paste to those. Moving on to Fairlight, this is the audio side of Resolve. And while it's incredibly powerful, it's also overkill if you're just starting out. Since we already did some simple audio tweaks back in the edit page, you can totally skip Fairlight for now. Now we're gonna head over to the deliver page where we export our final video. So the first thing we wanna set are in and out points. This is gonna tell Resolve exactly where your video should start and stop. You do this by going to the beginning of your video and press I on your keyboard, and then head to the end and press O. Just make sure you don't accidentally include some extra footage or clips that might be hanging on the end of your timeline. So when it comes to export settings, just keep it simple. I'd recommend exporting an H.264, which is perfect for uploading to YouTube or sharing online. Make sure you double check your resolution and frame rate. Just give your file a name, choose where you want it saved, click add to render queue, and then it'll pop up over here in the render queue on the right, then choose it, just make sure it's selected and hit render all. There you go. You got yourself a finished video. So there you go. That was a beginner's crash course on DaVinci Resolve. It's an amazing program that can be as simple or as deep as you want it to be. And the best part is the free version does everything we just did and you can absolutely use it for professional work. If you want more high quality to the point tutorials on everything having to do with filmmaking from camera tutorials, tech reviews and filmmaking techniques, please hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you can get updates. I just started this channel and I'm gonna be adding a lot of new content here every single week. Thanks for your time and I hope the video helped you out.